family and I have been in the hunting and, you know, go to the raffles with an elk club and buy a table and pray to God that I get a gun and don't end up getting a gun and spending $2,000. And, and, but it all went for a good cause. And so I'm not a special hunter. I'm not a guide. I just appreciate the opportunity to be outdoors with my family. And my God, whether I get to be a commissioner or not, where I'm at on my ranch is going to be better than when I left it for wildlife. Thank you. Uh, no follow-up questions on that. Thank you, Board Member Kelly and uh, Board Mem Member Chilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for being present, Bill. Appreciate it very much. You really answered my second question already, but I'm going to uh, go back to the first one. And it is, the. Uh, could you outline your idea of the division of responsibility between the federal agencies like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the Bureau of Land Management and the state of Arizona, you know, the, the Game and Fish Commission. Wow, let's go to your first question. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to put it simply. Nobody in my mind is better and more capable with background, science, and experience than the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Uh, they have to work with the federal, because of federal laws, and that becomes complicated. Uh, you may have heard about the wolf problem. Uh, that, those are things that we have to work through. But the state of Arizona has a wonderful game department, fishing, or game fish department, and they are the experts. But the Bureau of Land Management will close roads and do things of this sort. Forest Service will do that. Uh, there's all kinds of restrictions that are placed upon us, and we have to work together as a team to, to make sure that that makes sense. I'm not saying they're all wrong. I'm just saying sometimes we get we have federal bureaus that do things that come out of Washington, D.C. that don't make sense for the state of Arizona. Thank you very much. I, I hope I got through that okay. <laughs> Thank you, Board Member Chilton. Uh, Bill, thank you for being here and, and for your willingness to uh, serve as well. But uh, mine is a, a, maybe a little bit more of a global. There, there's one, one thing that struck me in your conversation, and it, you, in your presentation of your background and, and consideration, and that is sort of an evolution of thought as we meet the mission of the Game and Fish and how we have to work together. Uh, always concerned and we seem to get a lot of uh, feedback as far as how political the issue has become and when we're really talking about the mission of Game and Fish uh, I'm, I'm wondering how do you see that? Do you see it political? Do you see it as an objective on, on the management of our Game and Fish and, and our, our resources here within the state in that regard? Your, your mission is to manage, conserve and protect game and fish, uh, wildlife and fisheries, and to regulate safety, the watercraft, and HOVs. There's not one of us that I know of in the cattle business that don't agree with what you're doing. We may all have a difference of opinions on how it gets done. And that's why I want to be a commissioner, because sometimes they're not understood. They, they make rules and regulations that by the time it filters down to us, we're told, no, you can't do that. Well, why? Well, the Fish and Game Commissioner, Game and Fish, did that. So I, th I think, I don't know if I answered your question, but that, that's how I feel about that. Well, I'm going to follow up on that then a little bit. I, the job of the commission is to manage the resources, just as you've indicated. And, and what I guess my question was, maybe it's not political, and I think you maybe did respond to that. It's not a political, it's a matter of difference of opinion, but some people would label that as politics as well. But uh, my, you know, even though I've hunted and fished in my background, my background here is in a certain sense, how do we deal with the evolution of this mission as we have uh, in 
more urban environments sometimes. And this is where I, I guess I was going. Do you have any thoughts about your thinking with regard to how we have to evolve, not just communicate, but how do we evolve and provide for that proper management? It's a really good question, and you know, my mind is racing 100 miles trying to come up with an answer. But you know, I basically think it starts with communication. I also think that you need to get your field people out. I, I'm talking about my representation in the cattle industry, and as I said earlier, there's the two of us out there that really need to be out there. Everybody else comes out to see how we're doing. They don't come out necessarily to help us, they come out to see how we're doing. Uh, you're out there trying to establish a better uh, area for wildlife, and I'm out there doing the same thing. Uh, but we need to get, in order to go forward, we need to have that communication. It's a lousy word, I'm sorry to say that. And I'll tell you a lousy word, and I hear it all the time, we need to be partners, and I think, oh my God, I've heard that word so many times. You know, what does that mean? Well, what it means is somebody who really cares about making it work. You know, and if I was fortunate enough to be commissioner, I would hope that you guys would come back, and ladies, would come back and say, boy, that was a good decision. That's really made us stronger because we've gotten better. You know, your first number one goal as a commission is land access. That's your number one goal. That's me. You know, I, I want to work with you, and there's a lot of misunderstanding. Is that politics? No, it's miscommunication. In fact, out of the 11 that the commissioner has, we are directly involved in five of them. So there's, what an opportunity. That's not a, that's not a negative thing. That's a great opportunity. And I, if I didn't answer correctly, I, that's... No, I, I, and I, I would submit to you that it's, it's a, a broad question. And, uh, and I can understand your mind racing through to try to, uh, to uh, get a... Uh, sort of a calculated answer. And when I say calculated, I don't mean in a sense of uh, anything other than just a, a precise... Well, question. when I go home today, I'll have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. No, no. <laughs> in any case, well, that may be... In, in any case, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here today. appreciate your willingness to serve. <clears throat> My question... <clears throat> excuse me. With current revenue streams not projected to keep up with base funding requirements, <laughs> just to keep the current agency programs and services intact. What ideas or concepts have you contemplated about driving new revenues to the department? You know, I, I'm not sure that I have done what you're asking. I have constantly thought about it because I constantly think about how I can make more money off of 400 head of cattle. Uh, if I was fortunate enough to become a commissioner, I will have a much better understanding. Although I read every minute you've had, etc., and I'm more confused now than I was when I started reading them. But uh, uh, you know, the opportunities are there. You have to be sitting in the meeting, and your mind. Has, Wait a minute! They never thought about that, or we can do this. And uh, you know, raising the fees on hunting and wildlife is not necessarily, I think, a good idea raising the opportunity in more places that can provide entertainment and sportsmanship and hunting and fishing and could get more people to buy licenses is a wonderful idea. How you do that? Well, that's, that's the job of a commissioner that I think that you need to do. I do not have a magic pill that I can tell you, sir, that I, hey, let's do this and, and, and this will bring revenue. I do know this. In every business I've had, including the one I'm in now, that same question is a fundamental question in order to keep your job as a president. And so what you do is you deal with what you've got, and you're supposed to be able to think beyond that, or you shouldn't have been in that position. I think that I can do that. I think I've, I've done it, I've proved it, and I hope that if I have the opportunity, I can do something for a weekend, because I think that's the biggest deal. We need to come up with more services for the public that they're willing to pay for gladly in order to maintain and grow this business. And it may not be what any of us even know now. It may be something entirely different. Thank you very much. Thank you, board member. Board member Williams, please. 
Bill, thank you for coming today and thank you for your desire to serve. Uh, Bill, would you please explain the importance of the North American model of wildlife conservation as it pertains to the Arizona Game and Fish Department and the Commission? Well, the model, the North American wildlife conservation model was developed, I think, about 1935 with Theodore Roosevelt, and I can't think of the other gentleman's name, but basically had two basic uh, elements in it. One is that the wildlife, and I believe this totally, belongs to all Americans. And then the second is we have an obligation to manage it so that it go that it is a, it stains itself even maybe does better but it's there for future generations. And they have the seven sister or six sister, seven sisters of that and I'm sorry I can't name all of those. I could try but uh, but it's all fundamentally the same thing as the the uh, the mission of the the commissioners for the, the game and fish. Uh, the model is what was most of these game and fish uh, states use, and it's still as good today as it was then. Uh, but it's a big, big task, and. Uh, and then when you get from general statements like that, you got to make it happen. And making it happen is, is a, a good job to have. And you've got to always remember to go back to that model because that's why you're here. That's, that's the model, and that's what we deal with. That's how I see it, if that answers your question. Thank you. I have no follow-up. Thank you, Board Member Williams. Uh, I would then... Um, Follow up to the second question. Thank you, Chairman Lane. Um, Bill, I wonder what your thoughts were on the ever increasing population of wild horses and burros throughout our state. Um, do you have any suggestions on what either the commission or department can do to control their numbers and, and the damage they're doing to sensitive riparian areas, much to the detriment of a lot of our indigenous species of wildlife? How long do I have? <laughs> uh, Maybe a minute and a half. I sit on the RAC committee of the bill, and Joe, I don't know if Joe's here or not, but Joe DeVos sits there with me. We have 11 people in there from all principles of life, or the environmental landscape, etc. What it comes out to is Joe and I have the same interest. His department and I have the same interest. We we're having to deal with an emotional issue. Believe me, I, I closed down uh, the building on uh, Central and uh, Van Buren, or on Washington and filled the boardroom up with people yelling at me to talk about that issue. They have every right to do that. I'm not opposed to that. But you have to use good science. And we went for the University of Arizona and did it through the, their people, gentlemen by the name of Dr. Rule, uh, Dr. Howe, and we came up with what makes sense out there, first of all. Forget who says what, let's see what makes sense. And we're using that, and, and actually the cattle growers and the fish and game, our uh, game and fish department have worked closely on this, trying to get some logic put in that, and, but it's an ongoing battle because it's an emotional battle. And, but science should prevail. I shouldn't prevail as a, as a cowboy, and, and frankly, the game of fish shouldn't prevail as a game of fish if it was emotional. This is, science ought to tell us what's doing that. And we have the science behind us, so we need to get that cleaned up and get it done correctly for the burrow and wild horse population. Not just for us, but for them. Have you seen those animals out there? It's, a, it's horrible. Thanks for your thoughts on that, Bill. We appreciate it. Thank you, board member. Uh, board member Chilton. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you've already mostly answered that question. Like I said, you had answered my second question, and I did mean the second one, so I went to the first one first. Uh, the second one I, I'll do a little follow-up on. It regards the specifics of how to encourage the land managers who are the ranchers in many, many cases, because people on the ground, as you well know, every single day, maintaining those waters, putting out the salt, and taking care 
of the situation are, are the ranchers because the agencies can't be out there constantly. We work to try to collaborate with Game and Fish. In fact, there's an organization I'm sure you're familiar with, the Landowner Lessee Sportsman's uh, Relations Committee. And I've served on that. I think you have also. Uh, they, they make a really constructive effort to bring those two groups together. Can you elaborate a bit on uh, the importance of that group or what you see? Ms. Chilton, I can, I can tell you from my viewpoint the importance of that. Um, over, my, over the years I've been, been along in the cattle business, over 40 years, there's been issues that have come up with the game and fish department constantly. What, because I've been in a leadership program, I've had the opportunity to maybe get closer to know Joe and some of the people in there. Uh, uh, Larry was a friend of mine. Larry had been on my ranch. Uh, uh, et I wouldn't say a close friend, but yeah, a good acquaintance. Uh, when you found out what really was going on and you went to those kind of meetings, you were so much more knowledgeable and could do so much to make it. Because you're right. We are the people who decide whether that water hole is going to have water in it or not. You can't force me to spend money to turn that water on. I choose to do it. We need to make ranchers more aware of the value that they have and the responsibility. I mean, there's a responsibility. You know, I had mountain lions on my ranch. I bought that ranch knowing there were mountain lions on it. I don't want to get rid of all mountain lions. I just don't want to turn into like a wild horse in Burledale. You know, I know what's, what's on there. The greatest deal that we can do is, is a game department, one of the greatest deals, is we can sit back and, and not just do it once a year or once every three months when we have a meeting, but we can start filtering in. There, there ought to be meetings with, with uh, your field people and four or five ranchers. We've done that at my place. We've, we've said, hey, come on over and we're going to bring four or five ranchers over and Brittany, tell us what's going on. And that changes the whole attitude. Because now Brittany's a friend, and John Milligan before him, and uh, so you, and it needs to be the ranchers that need to step up on that, not just the game and fish. We have ranchers, and somebody's got to push them into doing it, and they're not against it. They just are busy and don't understand. And uh, I, I don't know if that is the answer to your question, but we need more of what you're talking about, and we need to have an on-the-ground relationship with your people on the ground and our people on the ground to make it go all the way up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Member Chilton. And um, I'm going to pass on the second question and to Member Townsend. Thank you, Chairman Ling. There's been a lot of discussion about hunter ethics and fair chase in the pursuit of gain. What is your position on fair chase and any specifics about what you believe a commissioner or the commission can do related to this issue? Wow. You hit on a tough one. Totally believe in fair chase. I mean, that's, that's how I grew up. I got a, a 22 and a uh, and 22 shells, but I didn't get a drone. Uh, we have an industry that is promoting uh, things that may have a major effect on us. This week on my ranch, there was a man out there with a drone, and he was looking to where the deer was. He was going deer hunting. I don't think that's illegal. I, I don't know, but as I told the Brat Committee and the Bureau of Land Management, this same guy is flying over and chasing my cattle and, and, and doing stuff. We need to come up with rules and regulations as the, as the technology grows to make sure that we never lose that fair chase. Because that to me is the essence of good hunting and fishing. Uh, the guy that works the hardest should be able to be awarded for that. The guy that flows a drone sitting on his porch in my yard and goes up there and checks the water hole every afternoon and then goes up there and shoots it, 
uh, I don't like that. I don't, I don't think that's right. I just have to be involved with that drone because it's going on right now. And I have told the Bureau of Land Management and the RAC Committee, and Joe, we need to come up with some regulations. And I don't know what they are. They've got to be worked out. But we've got to do some stuff as technology grows. And that's not just drones. There's other things, too. I mean, the fishing deal. I mean, you can drop submarines practically in the lake and find the fish. Is that fair? I, I, I think we need to, that's a major consideration that needs to be taken care of by the, the commission. But it also needs to be done like we did with the, um, with the HOVs. We, we worked out a plan with the HOVs that works out for both of us. Because it's our property, I mean yours. It's not just ranchers, I mean you have just as much right out there those animals have just, as I do. I'm not a cattle rancher, I grow grass. I just choose to feed it to cattle. But I also feed it to deer, antelope, turkeys, quail, and etc. And uh, we, we've got to be partner on these new regulations so that we don't step on each other. We may not agree, but we may come up with some way that's suitable for both of us. Thank you. Thank you, Member Townsend. Uh, yes, Member Williams. Thank you, Chairman Lee. How does the bill, can you tell me how the public trust doctrine pertains to the Arizona Game and Fish Department? Didn't read that one. <laughs> can't believe I didn't, but I read so much. No, I, in all honesty, I can't uh, quote it. I could tell you that the public expects the Game and Fish Department to manage the wildlife in the best interest of the public. And that, in my opinion, you do that. You are very good at doing scientific, you make decisions on good knowledge that you have gone and gone outside the department as well as have people inside the department to make decisions. I think the public expects you to do that and would be very disappointed if you didn't do that. And I think you do do it. I think it, uh, my dealings with Joe and Larry have been, they may have positions that they fill, but they also have an obligation to the public and they never let that over their own personality, their own thing. So I don't know if that answers that correctly, but that's my feeling on, on the question you ask. Thank you. Thank you very much. No further questions this time. Thank you, Member Williams. Uh, that does complete our questioning uh, for you, Mr. Bray, but uh, thank you very much for your presentation and the answering of those questions. So, thank you for allowing me to come. All right. Your excuse. Thank you. So we will now ask that... Uh, We have uh, Mr. Kelly Clark come in for an interview.